ladies. Well, uh, welcome to our February 2020 Moto Ikebana class and our cultural feature this month is Hina Matsuri. Now Hina Matsuri, uh, the Hina dolls are the emperor and empress dolls. And uh, the, the word Matsuri means festival. So this is really kind of known as girls day festival. And some of Japanese girls like to think of it as like princess day because they have their uh, their dolls all on steps, and uh, uh, these are all uh, different examples of Hina Matsuri dolls. Um, this is a quilt that uh, panel that I bought in Kobe, uh, Japan, and then I quilted uh, the panel. So it's a it's a panel with the Hina Matsuri dolls on it. Um, then I also have just some some ceramic and some little. Um, um, just miniature Hina Matsuri dolls. Some are plaster, some are ceramic, and some are oh, um, like juggling dolls. What do you call it? Bean bag. Bean bag. Bean bag dolls. And I have a little fan that has a little Hina Matsuri painted on the fan as a hashioki, a Japanese chopstick rest. But I want to share these particular dolls. We have a new student named Robin, and she came and brought, she lived in Japan for 12 years, and she brought this set is hers. And this set is hers, and this set is probably about 80 years old, and they are just lovely. And she has the whole set of all the dolls. So let me just explain about the set. Um, a whole set would be, this is um, a photo of one of our students, Minami, and this is her daughter, Nina, uh, with her set of Hina Matsuri dolls. There are seven steps on red carpet, and the top tier is always uh, the emperor and the empress. And then, I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna hand that around so you can take a look at that. The top st uh, step is the emperor and empress. And then the middle set um, is the three maids. And then the uh, third step is five musicians, three drummers, one flautist, and a singer. The, the fourth step are the ministers who have arrows to protect, like the security guards, to, to protect the emperor and the empress and the court. And the other three are um, uh, people, townspeople, who are there to help uh, to clean and sweep, and they have brooms and rakes and dust, uh, dust uh, um, feather dusters and that kind of thing to keep things tidy. And the last two uh, steps are the dowry or the furniture official furniture or lacquerware of the empress who's coming, getting married to the emperor and she's bringing along with her all of her um, clothing, her tea ceremony set, her, her favorite dishes, her favorite uh, brush and comb and all that, her makeup and all those kind of things. So all these chests and different things would be representative of all the things that the uh, empress is going to bring now into her marriage, right? And so that's what a Hina Matsuri set is, is like. Now, um, this is a special year because the uh, Japan, uh, the emperor who was um, Akihito, the older gentleman, and, and, and his wife, uh, Michiko, he abdicated the throne uh, last spring, and his eldest son, Naruhito, and Masako took over. So this is the first Hinamatsuri for them while they're on the throne, right? And so this is a very special year. Um, and then my, new, my newest acquisition is this mobile that's, that's kind of, I'll blow on it a little bit to get it to go around, but it's the emperor doll and the empress doll, uh, and there it's just a mobile of all of the Hina Matsuri dolls. So that's kind of fun. Now, one thing that the, um, that the festival is all about is really blessing the girls. Blessing the girls with, um, for a good family, a good marriage, good health and prosperity, and uh, just really giving them a blessing. And it's a fun time for girls to set up their dolls and uh, have them on display. And really they set it up a few weeks before, but it ends on the third month, the third day, so March the 3rd. Now, boys get their day, but that's coming up in May on the, the fifth month, the fifth day. But this is a, a great girl's opportunity to celebrate uh, the, the lovely beauty of marriage and, um, and of the emperor and empress.
I'm going to take this apart before I start. We don't want it together yet. Just a minute. <laughs> why, why you need a quilt and uh, cutting board? We're gonna, I'm going to show you that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> okay. So um, for, for this month, uh, we're going to do an, an upright form arrangement, and we're going to use these tea leaves, uh, spelled T-I. But when, when we use the word for heaven line, uh, we call it the tie, right? So we're going to say the word tie for these leaves, tie leaves, okay? Even though they're pronounced tea leaves, we're going to say tie because this is the heaven line. Now, I've drawn a sketch um, for you with um, four, different, um, four different ways to, to leaf manipulate this leaf. So on number one, uh, this is the simplest one and I think is the easiest one where you just take a good, don't use your flower cutters because if they're not really totally sharp, they might rip up your leaf. So be sure to use a very good sharp scissors uh, to make your cuts. But I would cut about an eighth of the way down and cut a little curve in and then cut a little uh, notch out of that leaf and then do the same thing on the opposite side a little further down then on the opposite side, go back to the other side and uh, make a little slice like so. And where you stop the slice, I want you to turn the leaf over and take a little scotch tape and put a piece of tape there to keep it from tearing. So mm -hmm. it's just like a, a door stop. It's like a stopper uh, to keep it from tearing uh, any further. Now to, to make this little curl, you just simply roll it on itself several times around and then breathe on it with warm breath and you'll find that the curl will stay more curly if you kind of heat it a little bit and uh, so that's number one so that's a number one leaf manipulation and that kind of represents really kind of a trinity of, uh, of heaven right there all right so that's number one then this one is number two, and to show you number two, um, you'll have your leaf, and what you're going to do is you're going to take, and you're going to take your scissors, and you're going to cut from the point, and you're going to gradually get a little wider, a little wider, a little wider, and stop about halfway down. Then you're going to go back on the same part of the leaf, and start cutting and get a little wider but keep it narrower this time and stop about an inch and a half or two inches above that one then you're going to take the leaf and you're going to wrap it around like so both sides and tape it on the back and it will look like it won't look very pretty on the back because you're going to tape it so that it doesn't come apart but I've taped it here so that the cut won't keep cutting down and here it's just to hold it in place but that kind of looks like the spirit kind of coming up around so that represents the spirit of heaven and then this one you might think it looks more like a dinosaur's tail <laughs> on the side or shark teeth but or shark teeth yes oh and I hadn't thought of that but if you cut seven notches out it represents the seven steps of the Hina Matsuri that were kind of um, is our inspiration for this month's design. Um, or the no number seven uh, in biblical terms also represents uh, uh, perfection or completion. So you can just cut seven notches out on the side and you can make them bigger as you get uh, further down along the end. So that's another option that you have is to just cut out little triangles along seven of them and that would represent that. And the last one um, is something that you can use your, if you have a cutting mat or a cutting board, a big cutting board. I have a cutting mat. I used to quilt and I have a what's called a rotary cutter. And uh, what you do is you simply uh, cut uh, a curve design in your, in your leaf and just cut it along you can hear it crackling. Then you go back and cut it wider. Then you cut a slimmer one on the other, on the bottom of the opposite side of the leaf. And it really kind of makes it look very mystical, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
So this one kind of represents mystery. Now, if you happen to have a little tear at the top of your uh, leaf, it's because these leaves, when they're shipped in a box and they get sent on a plane and they're in the box and the box gets jammed back and forth, these get bent. And that's why you normally see an imperfection in the top of a leaf because they, they haven't tied them down in the box. They just wrap them up and let them loose in the box and therefore uh, they have some imperfections at the tip. But if you find they have a split, you simply turn it over and take that handy scotch tape and tape up that little, that little slit and that'll help to hold it from opening up any further, okay? So those are four ways that you can do your, and we'll just use this one. Now I'm gonna just demonstrate the whole design. And you're going to have these materials. Uh, we're going to use the Laatris, two Laatris, three Salal, that's further along, and then one stem of each color, pink, white, and purple of the, um, or raspberry of the um, mini carnations and then three lily grass that we're going to use at the finish. If you have a container that is uh, a little um, top heavy, uh, you may, and you have a maybe a boat bowl and you're going to put stones in it, um, then you want to have a steady place to put your Kens on. Um, here I've, I've anchored this with another Kens on because this is very deep and I want to have my Kens on up higher in the container and still water over the top of it. So uh, I think it's easier if you have an Ikenobo container where it's um, very slender at the base. Uh, just when you're working with these particular materials, it'll work fine if you just take your Kens on out and work directly on the table, uh, fold up a towel and just work right on the towel. So we're going to start with our mystical tie leaf as our heaven line. You just want to give a fresh cut. These were all rather short, really. Actually, I'm going to cut with this one here. There we go. All right. I'm going to put that towards the back of the Kenzon, but just a little room in the, at the end of the Kenzon. We're going to make this in a row. Uh, we're going to not have it be straight ahead, but we're going to turn it so that it's, it's facing um, the um, emperor and his wife, or, and the, or the empress. We want to have the heaven line giving counsel uh, to the uh, bride and the groom here, okay? So you want, now you're going to put in your laatris, and you're going to measure uh, about three-fourths of the height of your uh, tie, tie placement is going to be your your first uh, yo placement, which is your man. And these are both going to be yo, yo, husband and wife. And what you're going to do is, if you look at your laatris, you want to pick the one that's the largest, the strongest, the most colorful. And that's going to be uh, the one that you're going to put in first. And that's going to be the emperor. So I'm just going to cut that, place it right in front of my heaven line, and then angle it slightly to the left. Then I'm going to give a fresh cut on here of the Empress, and we're going to put her right next to her mate, and we're going to pivot that out in, in a ray, kind of to the left. Now we're going to work on the court, those three maids that we talked about that were on the step of the Hinamatsuri. Now you can choose, um, I had some students say they wanted to do the color gradation, so they wanted to do white, pink, and then this color. So that's, that's fine. In my drawing, I used pink, white, and then the purple. But um, the purple, purple or dark colors tend to recede in a design. So it's advantageous to put those colors low in the arrangement because they tend to sink in the arrangement anyway. But we're going to place them in a, in a row, and yet we're going to create a triangle here with those three colors. So the first one I'm going to put in at half the height of heaven is the pink carnation. And I'm gonna pull that forward a little bit. Then I'm going to place in the white carnation right in front of that and pull that around so I get the best view. If you happen to have little tiny buds or little tiny uh, growths that are not going to bloom, 
please snap those off gently off of the carnation um, so that you get more strength and energy so that these will open fully. If you leave on all those little buds, some of these will never open because uh, the, they're taking these little buds are taking the strength away. So now we're going to just add in, I have another white one, so I'm just going to add that in to that, uh, to that grouping there, that little grouping of carnations. Now we're going to add in these, the little purple colors, and we're going to put that right in front here to make another little triangle of purple. And this is another white one, so I'm going to try to feed that in there. So I have my white, my pink, my white, and my purple. Then the next three will be the Salal foliage. Now the Salal foliage came in very dirty and sometimes it has little black or maybe it has some little hay, like hay looking or grassy things on it. Just take your water and your towel and give it a nice clean, you know, clean them all up and then analyze those three and make sure you have three of three varying uh, sizes or three varying heights. And then I want you to look at it and say which is the front and which is the back. So you don't want to look at that side. You want to look at that side. So I'm going to use this side as the side and I'm going to tuck that in and push that into my Kenzon. That's going to be my side angle. Then I'm going to take this one, I'm going to place it in the back to give me depth and dimension. I didn't, I forgot to mention these Salal uh, stems are very woody. So give a cut where you put the, uh, wherever you have the, now I cut it backwards, I'm gonna cut it the other way. Uh, you want the point to be on the inside of the Kenzon. And then you may have to take and slit up the middle just like a quarter inch or so, because perhaps it's just too woody to um, go into the Kenzon properly. Then I'm gonna push this in and kind of have it coming down in the front. So now I have kind of a, um, an asymmetrical triangle here between here and here and the front um, to frame in my flowers. The last thing we're going to do is use the three lily grass. And as you can see, I tied a knot in the end of each lily grass. And you want to be sure that they're all at different, well, they were at different lengths when, until I tied the knot. I didn't make, I made this one longer. So when you finish your knot, you want to pull it tight like that so that the knot won't come out like that. And these will be at three different lengths or three different planes anyway when I get it in. You want to floral tape it in about an inch, inch and a half and leave the bottom open so that it can get hydration. And then you have the option to put it in the back, on the side, or in the front. And depending on your container, you might want to give your design a little more um, dimension in the back. So then you want it in the back. Then I'm going to leave mine in the back and I'm gonna set this right in the top. And there is my finished uh, Hinamatsuri upright form design um, for today. So this represents heaven, Tai. This represents Yo, husband and wife. And this all represents the earth, or in this case for this month, it represents uh, the beauty of, uh, of the Hinamatsuri tradition with all of the court and all of the uh, um, the people that are tending uh, to the bride and the groom. Okay.